Hey, welcome to the shop. So today we're talking about some wire that can drop directly into most standard MIG welders and it really changes the game. It'll allow you to weld often thicker material, reduce your spatter, give you a nice smooth weld bead. It's easier to run, especially in the vertical position. It can also give you better weld metal properties, particularly under like impact or shock loading you might see on equipment and can also reduce the uh, opportunity to have defects like lack of fusion that you can get with MIG welding on thicker material. What we're talking about here is gas shielded flux core arc welding. It's often called by its trade name dual shield, but what it does is it takes a shielding gas along with a flux cord wire. So your wire is a tube of metal with flux in the middle, but it's different wire than you use when you're not using a shielding gas or on like inexpensive wire feed machines that don't have gas capability. It's not that at all. It's a totally different wire. Let's go ahead and look at the setup. So this is the wire that I'm going to be using. I'll link it in the description below if you want to check it out. The machine I'm using today is the HTP Pro Pulse 220. I'm using it as a standard MIG welder today without any of the pulsed features. So I'm going to go ahead and slide the wire on here and secure it in place with the nut. And then I'm going to use a knurled drive roll which has these little grooves to help feed cord wires. I just need to go ahead and set things up like my shielding gas and the great news here is it's the same gas that I use for MIG welding. That's 75% argon, 25% CO2 and some of the variants of this wire can also run with straight carbon dioxide if that's what you have. So it's really convenient you don't need another gas cylinder at all. One of the differences though is I'm going to turn my shielding gas flow rate up a little higher than I normally would. I'm going to be running it right around 35 cubic feet per hour, which is right around 17 liters per minute. Now, as far as polarity goes, this is DC electrode positive, the same that I'd run with a standard solid wire MIG process. And by the way, it's opposite of what you'd run with self-shielded flux core wire. Now, this machine has some standard settings that are programmed in for this type of weld and they're synergic settings so as I increase my wire speed it'll also match it with the voltage and when I dial it into this thickness of quarter inch or six millimeter thick plate I end up getting 519 inches per minute and 27.8 volts. Now when I run this compared to standard MIG welding I'm going to be using a longer contact tip to work distance or stick out. I'm going to have a little extra wire coming out of the gun. And I'm also going to be using a slight drag angle. So here I am running and you can see everything's laying in nice and smooth. And that arc is lit all the time and little droplets are piling down into the weld pool in a really smooth way. Now when I'm done, I take a look at this and there is a slag coating over as you have with any process that uses a flux. That's one of the drawbacks, of course. However, the slag with this is really pretty easy to remove, so it's not that big of a deal. Now let's go ahead and run it on a T-joint here, just running a fillet weld, and I'm just keeping my angle in at 45 degrees as I work my way along here and just keep an eye on the toes of those welds, trying to keep it as even as I can, and this is laying in nice and smooth. Let's take a look at it after it's done, clearing some of the slag away and brushing it down. I got a good result out of it. Now I did a little bit of experimentation to figure out some settings that would work for all positions because I found that these settings were a little bit too hot once I got to the top of a plate running vertical and what I landed on is 375 inches per minute and I just used the synergic voltage that came right out of the HTP. I found it to be right on at 24 and a half volts. Now as I run this, I'm moving a little bit slower as I've reduced my wire feed speed and just letting it fill all the way up this vertical joint and uh, moving my way through here. And then once I get through, take a look at it and I got a nice result once again. Now while this wire and process aren't going to be perfect for every situation, it definitely has a lot of advantages in many cases. So it's something to keep in your mind and know that it's available when you have some projects to tackle where this could be a real advantage. So we've just barely scratched the surface when it comes to gas shielded flux core arc welding. If you have questions or more things that you'd like to know or some knowledge that you'd like to share, don't be shy about commenting. And if you like this or learned something here today, let me know by hitting that thumbs up below. We'll see you next time.